I'm Fred McNeil and you're watching QAC TV7. The name of the program is Discover Queen Anne's. What we do, we bring in about once a week and people who've lived in the community, have contributed a lot to the community, and they share stories about Centerville as they knew it, uh, either working here or living here. I'm delighted to have one of my favorite characters and one of my Dunkin' Donut buddies, Jim Edwards, or everyone knows him as Doc Edwards, who for years were in Edwards Pharmacy here in Centerville. Doc, thanks a million for joining us today. Thank you. Okay, I wish I could tell you it was uh, 90 degrees outside and beautiful, but it's chilly and whatever happened to spring, right? That's right. That's right. Doc, let's go back. Tell me, born and raised where? I was born in Rock Hall, uh, and um, if you drive there, it takes the best part of an hour, but if you go across the river, Chester River, uh, which I always did when my parents were living, uh, it took me about 10 to 15 minutes uh, directly across Chester River. Okay. So um, I haven't left home. I worked. When I got out of school, I worked in St. Michael's for three years, but I've been within... Um, you stay here. You're in Eastern yeah, Shoreman. Yeah, I've been within uh, four or five miles of where I was born. Well, Doc, life. growing up in Rock and Hall, well, this have been the 40s. You grew up in the 40s, I, 1940s? Yeah, I was uh, born in the 30s, but uh, I uh, was there in the 40s and... 50s. What was Rock Hall and the Eastern Shore like in the 30s? And what were the recollections? <laughs> well, it was like Rock Hall was like Centerville. Uh, it was a, a big, big change from uh, current things. Uh, like uh, Centerville and Rock Hall, we had one law enforcement office. One for the yeah, whole town. One for town and Rock Hall and then, uh, Centerville, it was Charlie Tarbutton, and... Um, Big World Char War II hero, right? Yeah, Charlie, yeah Tarbutton. Charlie was quite a character, and he was the only officer, and I guess um, when I came here in 1959, and I think about 19, approximately 1963, he got a deputy, Paul So all Trump. of a sudden we had two. We had two, two. Well, Doc, let me go, I'm going to go back a little. We'll, yeah. we'll get up to center. What, growing up in Rock Hall, uh, what, how'd you become, what was the attraction to be a pharmacist? Is that in the family, or someone else was a pharmacist? No, no, no it was by accident. I was fortunate enough to get an, uh, a scholarship to Washington College, and um, I went there for two years, majored in chemistry and biology, and um, somebody mentioned to me, he said, why don't you get into medicine? And um, so pharmacy uh, was, at that time, the least amount, I think it was a four, five year course where medical school was eight, much seven or eight years, yeah, much yeah, longer, sure. yes. Yeah. So uh, I, I decided to go into pharmacy. It, it, it was very exciting and very um, self-rewarding. Um, you mixed a lot of the compounds. And that was the old days of mixing yeah. everything up, right? Yeah, and, um, and things have changed where um, it goes a cycle. Uh, for years, you did practically no Compound. Okay. My son joined me at the pharmacy. Uh, this is Dolan. Dolan, yes. He went on to pharmacy school also. And he joined me, I'd say, in uh, probably late 70s or 80s. And um, there was a um, demand for medications that were had been discontinued, not because they were bad, because, but because they were... Um, they didn't sell. Okay. Enough. And um, that's where the compounding got yeah, popular. And so yeah. that's where we got interested in compounding. And he and I both went to uh, Houston, Texas uh, for, I don't know whether it was two, 
three weeks, something like that, to brush us up. Because we, we, we studied yeah. study compounding in school. Yeah. But Doc, let, me, let me go back again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What, mom and dad, were you the first generation to go to college? Or? Yes, I was. You were, I was okay. A, I was the first, yes. Okay. What, mm -hmm. what did mom and dad do? Is dad in? Well, dad, uh, I think he went to fourth grade. Mom's in Rockwell, maybe? Yes, Rockwell. yes. Okay. And you had to help the family. It was a... He was a commercial fisherman, okay. and I have two brothers that are still fishermen, crabbing. One who you just talked on the phone yeah. five minutes that's ago, right? right? And that's right, and then um, I have a sister. But um, it's it's a trying occupation. Uh, there's you have good seasons and bad seasons. And Mother Nature very often that's dictates right. the whole thing. That's right. Yeah. About the time you think, man, I'm going to do well. Mother Nature or something it will step in and it goes, you know. Okay. And there's no control of it. But uh, a lot of these regulations they have now are unnecessary. It's just a they don't give nature a chance. It's a burden on the watermen. Yes. I, I remember as a boy when rockfish were so scarce that you thought, well, they're going to be extinct. This is when you were a young man? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 30s and, or 40s, somewhere and in there. three or four years, they, what are we going to do with all these yeah. fish? They were everywhere. Mother Nature is running, yes. running the game. That's not, right. Not DNR and you That's and right. right. Okay. That's right. Well, Doc, let me, I, just, I just want to follow this. What was this spark that got you to go to college? You got a, uh, you got a dad as a waterman. What was there or somebody? Well, it, you know, from the time I was three or four, boy, get off this water, you know. <laughs> this is dad's You're going to starve to death. It's going, okay. that's the end of it. And you've got to get an education. And um, and I would like to say I was fortunate enough to um, get a scholarship. I think This was we, an academic scholarship, yes, right? Okay. Yes, we had, um, I think it was 19 people in my graduating class. This is Kent County High School, Rock Hall. Rock Hall. Rock, Rock Hall, Rock Hall, Rock Hall okay. yeah. Okay. And um, we had um, four scholarships available mm -hmm. for a class of 19, and two of them were senatorial scholarships to Washington College. And um, I was like third or fourth on the list, to tell you the truth. But we had a, one boy took the scholarship, the senator, and a girl didn't want to go to Washington College. She wanted to go to the University of Maryland. College Park. Yes. Okay. So that left the scholarship open for me. So it paid for everything. I think my tuition was everything. I was mm. bored. And, this is, uh, and you graduated from high school? High school yes. Okay. I think my total bill at the end of the semester was $115 per semester. <laughs> That's not a bad. <laughs> what was what? Now, what, you you started at Washington College what yep. year? What year was that? 1952. Uh, okay, so this is right after World War II, uh, before the, the Korean War, I guess, is on the horizon. What was Washington College like in 1952? Well, speaking of Korean no, War, I tried to enlist. Okay. But I was, um, uh, what, four, yeah. or whatever, I toured me up, yeah, but, yeah, but, uh, and the Korean War was just about over okay. when I was draft yeah, 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 okay. right, but. Now, I but, spent 18 months in Korea. It might have been a good deal yes, that you didn't have to Yes, <laughs> yes, I, and then that was a terrible, terrible war. I, you know, I felt so sorry for it. Just the cool. Those people wouldn't get no appreciation for it at all. Still don't. Yeah, still, still, still don't. Yeah. Uh, what, what, Washington College in 1952, extremely small, yes, five buildings, yes, six buildings? I can't remember. Uh, uh, I would say in um, maybe uh, maybe two, three hundred. It's a very or small liberal arts college. Maybe tops. Yeah, okay. yeah. Right. Doctor, yeah. they still play football in '52, or did? Yes, they, they it did. was the last year. Oh, that was when okay. I got there. It was the last year of football. Now, who would they have played? Like Catholic University and Hopkins. Yes, okay. and, and uh, of course it used to be Westminster. Uh, now it's McDaniel. Right. Um, okay. And and uh, so it small was used to be the Mason Dixon Conference. conference. Okay. It was a group of. Um, uh, University of Baltimore, Western Maryland, um, 
I'm drawing a blank That's now, okay. but the the um, okay. Roanoke okay. and um, a lot of schools. Where they play, Doc? Where was a stadium? Did they have a stadium on campus? Are these a high well, school stadium? Well, if you call it a stadium, they, they had a bleachers field. and a field. Okay. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Matter of fact, they sell this great T-shirt. Washington College undefeated in football since 1952. <laughs> yeah, Did right. they drop right. it? It was an expense yeah. issue. Yes, expense. It was expense. expense. Yeah, it was. It was expense and uh, uh, recruiting okay. and uh, it. it for a college that small, it, it, was, it cost was a hassle. Was out of, it was a, yeah. So two years at Washington College. Yes. Then you go to no. Where'd you go to pharmacy school? At the University of Maryland. Oh, and, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they, they had the school. So you had so, to go across no bridge. No, yeah. there was a bridge at that point. Yes, okay. at that point. It, yeah. Yeah. I worked when I got out of high school. I did work at Washington in the FBI. Oh, uh, in DC. In DC okay. for uh, one. That's part of one year, and okay. that was the year that the Bay Bridge opened. Oh, okay, so maybe it changed so, the whole rules right. about getting over. That's right. In fact, when I started the job, I went over to Mount Peak Ferry. Okay. And, um, and by the time I was quitting, the Bay Bridge had opened. Yeah. Now, what was your reaction? I mean, uh, to you, that's a convenience all of a sudden, right? Or not? Yes. Or, or you like, oh, I yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't have to take the ferry. I remember the kid, my grandfather would take me on the ferry. It was a delightful experience, very slow. All of a sudden, you got a bridge and get home quicker, right? Yeah. I mean, what got you to the FBI? Uh, they visited high schools and people that were interested, and it seemed very interesting to me. And uh, they, if you joined them, uh, you join them as a regular employee, but they would give you the opportunity to become an agent. Okay. Uh, so you, you want to be an there. agent? Yes, yeah, okay. I want to be an agent okay. there. But uh, one story uh, I'll tell you, I, I played a little baseball when I was okay. young, and we had uh, uh, this it was the Mardell League. Okay, Maryland Delaware. Yeah, and, and also a by state. I can't remember sure. which. But anyway, sure. uh, I used to catch. Oh, you were a catcher? Yes. Tough position, tough and, position. Uh, but anyway, we had a night game like on a Wednesday or Thursday night. And um, we had two fellows from Rock Hall. That one was the manager of the team, and the other fellow was uh, a supporter, big sport. And they wanted me to come to play this game because they were playing stuff. All people, Centerville, okay, under the lights, right here with, with the minor right, league yeah, stadium. Okay. Right, it was Class D okay. stadium. So uh, there again, I think it was close to the end of Centerville being a Class okay. D team. But anyway, they said if you can get across the bridge, <laughs> we'll come to Matter Peak and pick you up right. and take you back. Okay. So I did. So they drove from Rock Hall to Mount Peak and back to Centerville, picked me up at Mount Peak and back to Centerville. And they told me, said, Jim, I said, um, we hope you do well tonight because uh, there was another boy, Tommy Coleman, who was quite an athlete. He was better, a lot better. Than sure. But he said the Philadelphia Phil, uh, Philadelphia A's, not the Phil's. This yeah. one, the A's. This is the A's and Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah. Right, okay. Said they're sending a scout down and they want. Watch this Coleman kid. Watch this Coleman kid and myself. Oh, both of them. Very good. So, I can't remember the guy's name, I should know. But anyway, he was there and. Um, Centerville, you were allowed, to, in those days, you were allowed to pay one ball player. Per game. Per game. Per game. Outside. Yeah. And um, Centerville brought in a pitcher. He went under the name of Rick Davies. Mm -hmm. That wasn't his real it. name. Okay. I think he, he told me he used to pitch for um, Glen L. Martin baseball team. So these are these guys that, who go around and pick up a couple bucks yes, under different they, names. Yeah, Football yeah, players used yeah, to do Yeah, okay. they used to pay him like $100, which was like a lot of money. That's a lot of money, yeah. yeah. And so this guy came as a dark horse and pitching for Centerville. And the stadium was on the way out. 
and I'd say maybe 30% of the lights were out. Had burned out. <laughs> it and was they a didn't have the money to replace it. So it wasn't real bright. You don't want to be playing in the corners in right, right field, right? That's right. <laughs> so anyway, they bring this Rick Davies in, and he throws a slider. Mm. I never heard of a slider. It used to be a fastball on the curve right, right. or in shoot or something like that. But this guy threw a slider, and the difference between a slider and other pitches, a slider comes with a spin of a fastball. Uh, you couldn't catch it all night, could you? <laughs> well, I could catch it, okay. but I couldn't. Hit. So, and where a curve fastball, you picked up the spin if you right. were a hitter, yeah. and a curveball, you could see the different see, spin. Yeah. But a slider come in, he thought, that's a fast, this is a fastball, yeah. you swing at it. It's not there. And, and it, it's not there. It yeah. slips. Yeah. It's a little yeah. way, like yeah. slips. Slides down. I couldn't hit that thing if I <laughs> stayed all day. So anyway, I went 0 for was 3 or 0 for 4. I think I struck out three times, and I might have tapped back to the pitcher one time. And I was catching, and Centerville was, uh, had a man on first and went to steal a base. And I threw the ball into center field, about <laughs> three foot over the second baseman's yeah. head. And Tommy Coleman, the other boy, he had the same trouble with the slider. He just couldn't, couldn't hit it? No, he couldn't hit it. And I think we only got like two hits all night, and they beat us like eight. To, uh, mm. But anyway, never heard from that stuff. Philadelphia guy. Never, he ate a lot of hot that, dogs. That, 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 was, that was the end of Did they of give that. you a ride yeah. back to the fair? Yeah, right? yeah. Okay. I, I know they hate to take me back, I tell you, because I had a bad night, I swear. But anyway, we what type of fun. Doc, what type of can someone tell me that they get nice crowds at those games? The old ball. Well, in, in those days, you, you, you uh, television, uh, mm. I don't know, they even tell no. us any game. And it baseball was just wasn't hard. really the yeah. national yeah. sport, right? The NFL right. wasn't that important. Right? And that's right. And um, it, uh, most homes didn't have televisions right. till mid 50s. Sure. Sure. In fact, it never it wasn't available to the public, I guess, to about 19. And if you wanted to see baseball, it was yeah. either the radio or you go to a local, local park. Right? That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. Well, Doc, let me jump ahead. So, yeah. you, you uh, I didn't realize you were a baseball player to that extent and a catcher. All right, good. And now, you, now I know why you've got aches and pains. We were talking about yeah, aches that's and right. pains. You're right. Every foul tip that hit that you, right? broke up. Yeah, okay. right. So, you right. go to pharmacy school, mm -hmm. and you, did you come right to Centerville, or did you go to... No, I... Um, had worked with uh, a chain that's discontinued, uh, uh, Reed's Drugstore. Okay, I remember the name. And yeah. at, I worked for them two nights a week for okay. a few extra bucks. And uh, when I got out of school, they wanted me to stay with them. And um, I said, I'd like to, but the Eastern Shore, you only, they only had two reed strokes. Oh, in the whole shore. On the, the whole shore. shore. One okay. was in Easton and the other one was in Salisbury. Okay. So we're going to put you with um, Easton. First of all, in those days, once you graduated and got your certificate, you had to work with another pharmacist for six okay. months. Like a mentor trained you, got, trained yes, you right? right. Yeah. Apprenticeship. You had, yeah, before you got your degree. So I, I worked in Easton for about two months, and they called me and said, uh, Jim, we want to have a meeting in Glen Burnie, one of their stores. Okay. So I went over there, and they were very complimentary. And said, You're doing a good job there. However, <laughs> it's always a however. We would, right, it's always a however. We would like to train you to be a manager of one of our stores. I said, on the Eastern Shore? And they said, no, uh, it would have to be on the Western Shore. Uh, we, we need managers, and um, we're growing. Maybe in the future, we might have some opening on the Eastern Shore. I said, but we would, we would like for you to come over and train to we'll show you how to operate a chain store. So I said, can I have a few days to think this sure, over? Sure. That's a big move for you, right? It would have been well, a big move. No, it, it wasn't for me because I'd made up my mind. <laughs> you knew. Yeah, I wasn't going there. So uh, I went to um, 
like, and uh, I asked a, a drug salesman, we used to have reps go around, and uh, he said, uh, in St. Michael's, a fellow named Hugh Hudson was mm -hmm. desperate for pharmacists. In those days, the pharmacists were... You and far between? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I went down, he hired me on a spot for $100 a week, and I thought I was... And that was a lot of money, money right? Yes, yes. it was. 5200 a year, you were But I ended up working about 60, 70 <laughs> hours for that. <laughs> but anyway, it was good. And then um, Tom, I heard Thompson's, it was a uh, pharmacy, uh, was going out of business. Now that was in, in town here? Yes. That, okay. And then there was one in Elkton, and I visited both. And I think the reason I picked Thompson's, uh, the one in Elkton was a better store. And when I say better, it, it did a lot more business. And um, Mr. Thompson, he was a nice gentleman, but he was he's up eight. in yeah, yeah he yeah, was in yeah. his eighties, and he was that. So I um, told Mr. Hudson that. Uh, that I was going to leave, and, um, and I was going to give him two or three weeks. Okay, so uh, Wes Thompson, uh, Mr. Thompson, fire son, chief of town, used to be the yeah, fire chief, a yeah, little bit of everything. Right, yes, right. local. He hero. called me. Uh, I think I met with him like on a Saturday. He called me Monday. Said Dad just had a major heart attack, oh. and. If you want, so you got to come now, right now. or we got to close. Yeah. So I, I had to leave. And so I worked at St. Michael's for about three years. What, year, what year did this happen? 1959. Oh, so you came yeah, to Centerville in 1959. September 1959. Okay. Yeah. Now, Jim, when you came to Centerville, we'll get into Centerville. Uh, did you buy a house and a business at the same time? Or did no, you I bought the business and uh, I rented a home down at. Um, uh, Pond Airport, okay. Mallard Point, sure. actually, okay. and then um, I fell in love with a home down that way, and I bought it a few years later, and um, been there ever since. Okay. Now, uh, what was Centerville like? Now, was it uh, was the Thompson Pharmacy the same place as uh, Edwards yes. Pharmacy? Yes. Oh, exact yes. same spot. Okay. Yes, and the um, they used to have the Masonic Lodge, or it was a two-story building. Okay. And a mirror building and um, it caught, I, well I had it remodeled in 1968 okay. and in 1967, 68 I guess, 67 because um, um, the theater used to be a large Moore told me he used to work there as a bowling yeah, alley and everything. Yeah, a bowling right, alley right, underneath, right, right, right. yes, and a movie theater on top. And it was right next to the pharmacy, and uh, it caught fire. And um, I um, had somebody working for me that night. He called me. He said, Jim, I just want to tell you there's a fire Terrible next fire. door, but I think everything's in trouble. We have a little smoke, but that's, that's bad all. So, of course, I jumped in the car, and by the time I got to the bridge, come into, all I could see was flames. red flames, you know, and uh, I ran up and uh, went in the back door and, and got some prescription files and the narcotics and a few things in a trash it. can and got out and almost got out today, but a con chunk of concrete caught me when I was running out the mm. back door and you were hit by broken eye, yeah, you by a, um, a broken ankle, which is also bothered me. But anyway, I was very fortunate. You did destroy the building then? You did or yes, did? Oh, you, oh, it did. It was oh, yeah, it, oh, completely. it was a cellar, and it was level. The everything about it was in in, in the mm. cellar. Mm. It was just like a vacant. You know, exploded. The theater exploded. Really. You know? Yeah. And that was a landmark. Bill Moore told me that yeah. was a great, a great That's spot. Right. Okay. That's right. Now, Jim, let me ask you this: We're gonna we're gonna do a part two, all right, another day, all right? Because I can talk to you about baseball, FBI. I didn't know you were a G-man, right? That's pretty good. Okay. <laughs> no, well, not really, because that that discouraged me. I I went there, thought I'd be doing something like that, but I I was in the mail room. Oh, so, okay. Uh, they had really you sorting mail. Yeah, sort of, <laughs> it, it was nice. I enjoyed the fact that I delivered mail. It was. Would always be two, and uh, we went to the White House. We went to uh, oh, wow. all all the important buildings and agencies. 
But at that's that pretty time, exciting for a rock hall yes, kid, right? Yes, it was. And uh, the most exciting thing was in those days we had the Atomic Energy Commission. Oh, AC, and boy, yeah. you'd go every corner, every 30 feet, there was somebody stopping you, asking for identification. Yeah. And yeah, it was hard as hell to get in there. Oh, I bet it was. Yeah. It was interesting. But it, yeah, that was very interesting. Well, yeah. Jim, so uh, interesting life. Rock call, baseball, FBI, pharmacy school, Centerville. I mean, Edwards Pharmacy, became, you're too modest to say, but it became a landmark and one of the most thriving businesses, I would say, in Centerville for, what, 20, 30 years? 52. Yeah, okay, okay, <laughs> to be exact. Right. Well, look, will you promise me we'll do another show? Because everyone's going to be mad at me. i got a million questions to ask you. Can we well, do this again? Well, yeah, but uh, if, oh, this if is you great. think it's going to be interesting, look at, we're just, I Because um, I want to spend a, another show with you just talking about how in the 52 years you were there from... Centerville changed, right? All the little neons oh, yes, and things you said, yes, okay? Yes, yes. We, we can't, TV doesn't do it. Well, look, let me thank you for show number one, okay? Thank you for coming because I know your brother wants thank you out you. on the water thank fishing you. and whatever. This is Fred McNeil. You're watching QA TV 7. We've had Doc Jim Edwards with us, and I promise you we'll get him back as we've just scratched the service for some wonderful stories. I'm Fred McNeil. My time's up. Thank you for your time. We're going to see you next time.